is a fly from her castle, and her dog's ears are a heart, and her, her dog's tail is, is a rainbow from like the fly. A rainbow butterfly, do you think? And she has a friend who is one level castle up from her. She is a unicorn princess sister. And she has a pet too. And her pet is a unicorn. She has a castle. She, the unicorn's eyes are the windows, and the doorknob is the nose. And the and there's meant to be flags on here like that. There's meant to be flags, so like it's like the ears and the horn. Yeah, and that's her fairy. And that's her fairy, and they're both friends. And the w w and the way they got their fairy is when they spotted the difference. So like that heart was not meant to be there. So she got it out, that heart out, because that was not meant to be there. And she got that because there was an extra window in here. That's how she got her fairy, her wand. And how they got their dog was another part of the missing castle. There was four. How they got her horn was there was an extra, like, flag. And how she got her ears was more hot. And how she got her tail was too many ponytails. Oh, I'll just say hi, everyone. Uh, she wanted to show you her artwork yeah. today. So she's taken over the beginning of my broadcast but I'm sure at some point soon you'll let mummy do her broadcast yeah, and too. <laughs> her, her pet by using by using too much tail too much ears too much horns too much eyes too too much stormers Woof. because that to make the unicity oh so all and the, the slide so. all the extra bits were from okay are they made out of lego what are they made out of? Something oh, just, real. okay, just, oh, real things, okay. Good stuff. All right, so, well, thank you so much for your contribution today. <laughs> High five, high five. Uh, can mummy do her book up? One more thing, okay, one more thing. Oh, and if you always eat like, I know if you want to be healthy, like you like want to eat so much vegetables, no tree food, but you have to keep it balanced. So if you only like eat, so like for example, if you eat too much carrots, you act you actually might die because like that's too much healthy food. You need to balance it out. I did tell her the story of one man who just exclusively ate carrots for a period of months, and he became so overburdened with beta carotene that he did die. But we're not really at any risk of eating too many carrots here, are we? We should eat but more if, carrots. <laughs> but if you eat too much, much tree food, like, okay, too, too much healthy food, I'll just eat tree food. That could be bad, could you? Yeah, you'd wear out your pancreas. And the, remember the video where the... Oh, where the man was fat? Yeah. Yep, yep. He, he looked for... The, because he ate too much treaty food. Yeah, that was a quarantine video where it showed a thin man dancing and it said before quarantine. And then it showed a similar looking man, but he was a bit rounder around the waist. And it said after quarantine. And they both did the same dance and it was quite funny, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that was humor, humor, humor. Um, Marsha says she is right about a balanced diet. And John said a few cookies out of the freezer for balance is okay. I think he's remembering okay. some time when you got yourself a couple of cookies out of the freezer. Okay. Oh, look, and Sheldon says that that's quite a complex, detailed Thank piece of you. artwork. Oh, and they said you're very eloquent. Eloquent means... I uh, know what eloquent means. What does eloquent mean? No, eloquent does not mean beautiful. Well, <laughs> eloquent, is about, I know. eloquent is about speech. So you thought it was a compliment, and it is a compliment, but it's a compliment about your talking dog. All right, Mum is moving the artwork out of the way now, darling. You going to go play with your brother? No. No, you're going to stay here. All right. Yeah, that says eloquent. Oh, that says beautifully drawn, and Alan says great artwork. And... We've got a whole little community here. I did it from 
well, get things off. Like, I, I didn't get it from her. I just. Well, when they say maybe you get it from your mother, they're, they're thinking about if anything is inherited. Well, I got the unicorn girl actually from I read lunchbox in my I read in my class and see how the unicorn lunchbox from Smiggles. Oh, from Smiggles. Yeah, they they weren't talking about where you got the idea for your story. They were talking about where you get the skill from. Where do you get the skill of being comfortable with talking? Is that just in you or did you get a little bit from listening to your mummy? Nope. No, no. <laughs> Maybe it, nope. you inherited nope. it from nope. mummy's nope. genetic? Nope. Okay, no. All right, well, that was a good chat. <laughs> Talk to you soon. All right, goodness, should have brushed my hair. Okay. Uh, oh, she says maybe you can be an intern for your mum. That means having a job to do part of the work here, to get experience in broadcasting. You like that, I know. Hmm? But then I get some of the money. Too. Then you get some of the money. Yes, she knows that I have a Patreon account. I, I hadn't looked at much at my Patreon account for a while, and then I, oh, the light's too bright. Then I did it recently and got over myself, had a look and thought, look at all these names of people that I should be calling out and thanking and maybe making little private videos for maybe where I sing or we do some more art or something. To say thank you to the Patreon people. Me too. As, as well as to say thank you. You want to do some more art? I, I can do cells. I'll do cells. Yeah, you can do great drawings of cells. Do, well, do you want to do a new drawing on that board? Well, so I have these skills. I remember some things from our year. We, we, we need just like a piece of a piece of paper. Okay. Paper? Here you go. You can follow along too. Okay, can I have a pen? Yeah. No. What kind of we pen need, do you want? A black tape? I'm going to need two bowls, one little and one big. Okay, you take it to the living room, darling. You get your little bowls. Just don't draw on the sofa, okay? Yes. All right. And they're all, they said she's a strong, independent young lady. I'll That's see you when it looks like when I finish. When you finish? Okay, cool. Uh, all right. <laughs> Someone said a budding nutritionist. <laughs> Well, thank you, Perry Pilot, Marsha, Alan, John, Phil. Have I mentioned everyone? Sheldon. Yes. So that was the early morning wake up call. Oh, well, not, not that early, but for you, it's nighttime. I'm glad I've had the discipline to start broadcasting a little earlier today because then I can catch you all without imposing on your sleep time, which is fantastic. Uh, so. What's the news at the moment? What are we talking about? Apparently, Joe, President Joe Biden is the most popular with young people, uh, the most popular president in the last few decades. And so that's promising. But at the same time, contextually speaking, Republicans are attacking access to voting, which can have two impacts. It can impact voters by making it more difficult for them to vote and so achieving Republican goals of shrinking the electorate and specifically excluding black Americans whom they know, statistically speaking, uh, have a higher probability of voting for Democrats. So that's one easy way of, of reducing, uh, reducing the ability of your opposing party to have uh, a fair chance of electoral success. But secondly, publicity around the voter suppression measures can help to energize the vote because there has been a fear that with Trump out of office, some people would lose their motivation for engagement with politics. As we know, Democrats at a statistical level are slightly less likely to go out and vote in non-presidential elections than Republicans. Republicans are often very driven. Uh, Fox. Any more paper? I don't, I don't have a bigger piece of paper, darling. No, but I can't stick. I can't stick. I really need a bigger piece of paper. Yeah, I've only got normal size paper today. Then I can't do it. Mm, okay. Because I need oh, because for the cells you need bigger bowls? No, it's just I need like a bigger space so I can do the middle. Yeah. In the middle. Well, I do you want to try and tape two pieces thing. together? No, no that okay. will work. Mm, well, then I don't have a solution. Because I need to take them to, 
Because the only way I can tape it is if I tape it in the middle. Yeah. Then I can't do the middle. Yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. Uh, you could look around in case there's like a leftover old artwork no, that you could draw on the back of. Okay. Uh, oh. But I can tell you how to do it. Oh, you want to describe how to yeah. do the artwork? Okay. okay, we're having a small art tip. I think this is a, a, an introduction on how to do cells. Cells. Okay. Now, it's Human not cells. completely finished. So I, we didn't get to complete finish it. We didn't have enough time. But this is some of how it. Okay, some of it. Okay, so you need a, a piece of paper. Make sure it's a bit huge. Okay, then... Get two fingers, just two fingers, two. But it can't be your pinky or your thumb, not pinky or thumb. They have to be like together like this, okay? Now, put that on the edge of your paper, like this, see that? And then draw a tiny saw, then get a tiny bowl, then put it, but not too tiny, then put it near your fingers, mm -hmm. and then twist it, then you you get our three fingers still not pinky or this just join these together just these fingers and then you place that near your small circle and do you and get the big ball and put it place down and twist over it and then you need to do tiny rectangles but not like just over a the circles then we're going to twist over all of it and then, and once you've did it for both circles you can color your thing in well but not in like in the circle then you need to do a pattern like one line down one line across oh, one line across to represent and and, and you need to do yourself. dots in the mm -hmm. middle mm -hmm. and then you need to get some paint, color it in, well, with two colors. Use one, two colors for, for the big circle, maybe red and, and orange. And for the little circle, two different colors, maybe yellow and green. This is, in case I just didn't hear what this artwork is about, this is how you can represent cells. Well, it's not actually cells, it's actually real. So it's microscopic. It's art representing wheels. microscopic wheels. Wheels. Yeah, it's actually wheels. So it you're using wheels. wheels, but it represents the shape of cells? No, it represents wheels. It represents wheels. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, thank you very much for that uh, lecture on how to draw wheels. Yeah, because wheels. you know all wheels have dots in the middle. Wheels if you need to find usually them. have a central point, yes. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, darling. And mummy resume her broadcast? Yes. Okay. Well. Where's Bunny? Where's Bunny? You left Bunny in the living room, I think. You did? Okay. I don't think this is going to be a long broadcast. I feel like there's some family involvement <laughs> expected. But uh, John Ardmore says, hopefully Dems are wising up about midterms. Yes. Ah, you mean Democratic voters. I tell you what, I think there's a real appetite for a spirited response to Republican outrages. When I say outrages, I mean outrageous things that they are doing, trying to accomplish. What, is, what done? Bunny's not there? Okay, I don't have Bunny, sweetie. I do have the Captain Underpants book you're reading, but you're going to have to keep looking around for Bunny. Maybe look where you were trying to do your art and maybe ask Daddy as well. Daddy might help. Uh, what are we talking about? Ah, oh, yes. So the leader of the DCC now, I think, is the man who challenged Lindsey Graham in South Carolina, Jamie Harrison. And he has been issuing some really full-throated rebuttals to Republicans. And I think it challenges an important assumption that people sometimes make automatically, that civility is an important rule. Now, it's not a rule observed by Republicans who continue to lie and make false accusations against Democrats and falsely accuse American elections of being riddled with voter fraud when it's entirely untrue. Uh, on the contrary, American elections are riddled with 
uh, deceitful propaganda from the Republican leader, Donald Trump, backed up by multiple Republican politicians. So the assumption I'd most like to challenge really is that they were afraid of Trump. They'd say, oh, they're afraid of a tweet or they're falling in line with Donald Trump's lies because they're afraid of being primaried. They are clearly not. Donald Trump's tweeting has been removed as a, as a factor with any type of potency, he can't tweet. But what Republicans are doing is showing their commitment to pursuit of power without guardrails, without civil uh, safeguards, without commitment to truth or justice. They are unjustly, unconstitutionally trying to shrink the electorate, trying to restrict access to voting, uh, trying to bring voter ID into play. And I don't know if people explain it to the right very often or just tell them that they're racist because they are racist but I think it's worthwhile investing a few seconds in telling them that you found bunny I told you to ask daddy for food you think mommy makes the best popcorn your mommy does make the best popcorn okay well you'll just have to give me a little bit of time and I know you just had a sandwich maybe I just made you sandwich maybe get the strawberries out of the fridge while you're waiting for mommy to make more popcorn uh, oh, Daddy can help you wash them. My brother can help you wash them. <sighs> My baby, mommy, baby girl, mommy is broadcasting. <laughs> uh, Trump was so offended, said John, when someone suggested his hold over the party might be waning. Yes, uh, he's so offended, i.e., namely, he's trying to use anger to shore up the banks of his influence because narratives amplify what's already happening. So if there's already a trajectory for Trump's influence to be waning, that he's not on Twitter, that he's not in the Oval Office, he doesn't have that power anymore. And a substantial amount of his power was the, the impact of surprise. You know the element of surprise and you say in any given situation oh well that person got here first they had the element of surprise the gunman opened fire he had the element of surprise nobody else had their weapons nobody else was able to quickly respond because semi-automatic weapons deliver bullets so quickly that so many people died uh, the element of surprise that's what Trump had with his victory in 2016 when everybody thought American politics was so bound by the rules of civility and they thought that someone who breached those rules would not be an acceptable player. So first of all, he surprised people by winning the Republican primaries and then he surprised a lot of people by winning the election. I remember speaking fearfully to in Australia to a, an American expat who lived in Australia and saying, I'm so worried that Trump will win. There's been the San Bernardino shooting and I'm just worried that the, the forces of xenophobia will uh, propel Trump to power. And she said, oh, no, 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 you know, don't be afraid. Don't be worried about that at all. Republicans definitely won't vote him in, i.e. overestimating the number of concerned Republicans who would say, yes, he's not a normal politician, we'll just sit this one out or we won't, or we'll write in somebody else's name or we won't vote for him. That was an overestimation of the good faith of prosperous white Republicans. They operate and their votes seek to operate a protection racket for privilege, a privilege that is very white centric because there have been gatekeepers uh, monitoring that privilege and ensuring that it's not given over too much to, to be shared with black Americans or Americans of color. Uh, jobs, and I've been stressing this point a lot lately since I discovered it, good jobs uh, that carry a lot of benefits are effectively heavily government subsidized. So all of America is subsidizing the people with the good jobs because they get employer funded health insurance and say, oh yes, it's because I scored a job through my skills and merit with this employer. That's why I have this great health insurance. And really your employer is able to use that payment as a 100%
tax deduction, meaning the community is funding your excellent health insurance. Not to disparage it, I'm sure it sounds great to have, but whether consciously or unconsciously, that is this huge bank of privilege that has mostly been centered on white people because a lot of black people are excluded from the labor market by the people who review resumes. So that even in pro-diversity corporations where they uh, claim to be seeking people of diversity in their, in their labor force, there's still people at the front of the admissions gate throwing out the resumes with black sounding names. Uh, oh, Sheldon's got some, some, no, something more than five months after the presidential election, there is a private consortium that's Trump leaning about to recount the Fulton County, Georgia votes. 1.2 million votes. There were over 10,000 more votes for Biden and they want to find these votes. Extraordinary because there's been, what, over three recounts, maybe three, not over three, three recounts of Georgia as an entity so far, I think, in the, in the months before Joe Biden's inauguration. Uh, so fringe benefits are so variable in the US by region, yes. But I'm just still going to acknowledge that there's this pervasive element of white white gatekeeping and that there's all these studies people might may or may not be aware of that indicate there is a lot of baked in prejudice and I imagine that's one of the driving factors for the increasing cost of higher education black Americans have really disproportionately started to pursue higher education over the last few decades since they've been allowed to attend uh, institutions that weren't exclusively catering to black people. They've been trying to attend the institutions that uh, carry that level of prestige that is presumed to be a pass into the upper echelons of, of management, of influence, of good jobs. Uh, but the prices have risen and risen and risen. And I imagine that's a function of an effort to gatekeep, to gatekeep access to tertiary education out of the hands of black Americans or at least to deter some people down the line when they realize how much debt you have to take on. And also, uh, very critically speaking, higher education debt attracts interest that's not just simple interest, but that is compounded interest, meaning those costs rapidly can balloon out of control or expand significantly because compound interest is when you are beginning to pay interest on uh, a sum that's not just what remains left to be paid off of the principal amount that you borrowed, but also interest is calculated on the extra debt created by interest you haven't already paid off yet. So you're paying interest on a growing total rather than paying off the amount that you initially borrowed. And that creates a very difficult problem for students. So I'm not one of those people that say you have to just wave aside all of the debt students have ever incurred because that is likely to be offensive to people who endured hardship and sacrificed in order to pay off their student debt. But far more broadly politically appealing would be a move that, that ends the practice of charging compound interest for student debt and instead makes it simple interest so that people have more manageable totals to deal with and you're not shackling the economy by constraining the income of all graduates who are just trying to uh, pay back something that, yes, benefits their lives potentially, but uh, also benefits society. The more graduates you have in society, the more well-educated people you have. Even though lots of people disparage tertiary education, it does often make well, it makes people who are more likely to be uh, considered in how they approach life. If they are employed as police officers, they're less likely to, uh, to kill people. Just a slight reduction in probability is, is something to reach for. John notes that university campuses now are much more posh than when you attended. Uh, so they're charging more money, but there is a concomitant 
elevation of building standards, architectural standards. He says we had no air conditioning and noisy heat in the dorms and basic other stuff. You think they've gone a little overboard in ways that have little to do with learning. Well, it could all be a front to try and justify a significant, a steep rise in admission prices and tutorial costs that actually subconsciously has more to do with trying to exclude as many black Americans as possible. That's a theory. I'm speculating. Uh, so Sheldon's noting that the people in Georgia in the private consortium are not Georgian election officials and are just essentially paid minions of Trump's continuing efforts to prove his big lie. How do we think that's going? There's still a very powerful Republican media machine, but they're being sued by Dominion and Smart Tech, um, some Fox News people, let's see. Lou Dobson was being sued. Rudy Giuliani was being sued. Sean, was Sean Hannity being sued? Uh, so that is one factor that might exert a dampening effect on the big lie, the promulgation of the big lie. And as time passes and their efforts are not successful, they find it hard to increase the number of people who subscribe to that. Republicans apparently are pretty stubborn in doubling down on, nope, we're sympathetic to the in insurrection and we, we still support Trump and we don't, and there's 30% of Republicans who say they will never accept Biden as the legitimate president. That's, at least that's not a plurality of Republicans. There's more Republicans who at least say they'll accept Biden as the president. So I want to see how that matters over time. When the media reports on these things, sometimes they tend to take the most jaundiced view, like look at these Republicans who still believe the lies. And I want to see somebody chart how that is eroding if over time at least there's a marginalised sum of Republicans or Republican-leaning independents who are peeling away from the Republican Party. So please, I urge you, if you follow me on Twitter and you ever see any article that has a more positive analysis or at least looks at the glass half full uh, in terms of eroding Republican support, please share it with me. I feel like there's a story there that's, that's not being told loudly enough for me to catch it. Me, because I'm, in, I'm not in the States and so I don't... Uh, quite have my finger on the pulse of what the media is like in the US, which often seems like it's a benefit that I'm not overwhelmed with the emotional roller coaster of how the news is presented. But yes, Sheldon thinks that Hannity so far has escaped the lawsuits. And Christopher Lucas gave me a high award. Hi, Christopher. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to see you. Uh, John notes that there's a big overlap between Trump supporters and people who won't get vaccinated. And he's narrowed it down specifically to those who don't accept Biden as legitimate and who don't accept the vaccination as legitimate, i.e. the Trumpiest Trump supporters. All right, now there's some things that I've really been meaning to get to. And one is, uh, let's see, Jamie Harrison. Can you pronounce it Jamie Harrison? Now I must have forgotten how to spell it. How do you spell Jamie Harrison? Okay, J A I M E. So maybe you just pronounce it Jane, Jane Harrison. All right. Now he has been sassy. And I want to share it. Oh, good. 
He's got a few thoughts that we will listen to. Uh, he says, a new report this morning reveals that Republicans, including Lindsey Graham, saw the challenges at the border coming and did nothing. Instead, they've politicized the lives of children, while Biden and the Democrats are the only ones working on solutions. It's something, I, I just really want that dialogue to be changed of, of Democrats having to surrender to Republican uh, Republican opinions about the border, Republican exploitative narratives that tend to overplay the risks and the threat of, of migrants at the border. People who tend to come to America and, and add to the sum total of uh, hard work ethics and um, willingness to contribute, etc. Bernadette just dropped something, which I think you're the first person, Bernadette, a monthly sponsorship. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, wow. Very kind. Here is Jamie Harrison. Hey, folks. It's Jamie Harrison, the chair of the DNC. You may have seen the headlines, but I want to talk a bit about what's happening to the children at the border and what this means for our country. You know, I'm a father to two young kids. And for me, one of the most important questions we should be asking is, how is our country going to treat children in desperate need? Every child deserves safety, to be treated with dignity, with respect. But once again, the GOP is using Trump's playbook to try to divide us over something most Americans agree with. Families belong together. It's simple. Children aren't a political football, and we should be proud of the important steps President Biden and Vice President Harris are looking to take uh, for each and every one of them. Republicans are using fear to distract us from the important work we're getting done for the American people. They prefer a world where these families aren't deserving of humanity, dignity, safety, and respect, where kids are ripped away from their parents. The Republican Party stood by President Trump as he enacted a cruel policy that tore children away from their parents. His administration schemed to shut down our asylum system, and then they turned their backs on people seeking safety. They are using an old playbook based on racist stereotypes and hate to make Americans fear families trying to get to safety. But we know better. Family separation is wrong, and it isn't the legacy we will leave behind. The truth of the matter is this, that these families are no different from yours and mine, and that if your house is on fire, if a hurricane has devastated your town, you're going to grab your kids and you're going to run. Never doubt the power of a mother's love or of a father's love or the power of hunger. Republicans are cynically stoking fear about children and families to score political points. It's par for the course for a party that's more interested in banning water bottle distribution from voting lines than actually fighting for our values. Their tactics didn't work in 2017. They didn't work in 2018. They didn't work in 2020. And they won't work now. I'm proud that Democrats are working on solutions to the challenges at the border. Republicans need to drop their scare tactics and they need to help to find real solutions. Wow. I, I don't know about you guys, but I am so heartened and pleased to hear somebody just address the style of, of Republican political operating, to refer to what they're doing as scheming, to castigate them for supporting Trump's policies of taking children from their parents, to remind Americans of how much that hurt, what it feels like to have such a potent stain on your moral character as a nation, to be internationally infamous for ripping parents away from their children, so that there were um, migrant mothers who were trying to sleep with their legs locked around their children at nighttime so that guards couldn't take their children from them as they slept, uh, so that the world heard leaked leaked audio of children crying desperately for their mothers and fathers while guards laughed and said, it's quite an orchestra, uh, like a cacophony of, of sound in, in this very exposed callousness towards 
children in incredible psychological distress. Uh, John notes for me that not everyone spells their name in a conventional way, and I'll notice that more when I get here. Yes, I think Americans have internalized a lot of respect for varied name pronunciation, and that's definitely something I'll work to get on board with because I'm relatively unfamiliar with that. So, Harrison celebrated that America, the Democrats are pursuing solutions for the border, acknowledged the universality of, of love, of hunger as critical propelling motivators so that we can relate more to migrants instead of participating in the fascist style demonizing of, of a scapegoated minority group so that we don't keep using the terms illegals all of which act to linguistically strip the humanity from a population subgroup and therefore emotionally strip the humanity and the dignity from them and encourage people to inculcate hatred in their hearts, hatred and contempt and fear. So good for Jamie Harrison. That was some straight talk and the Democrats need that instead of being victimised by Republican grasp of the narrative. Often Democrats have been content to pursue policy and be the policy wonks who, who get up and say, no, 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 we're, we're trying to do the right thing, but don't address what Republicans are doing, which is not just having a different point of view, but of manipulatively seeking to distort facts and data to emotionally manipulate uh, people into voting against truth. Hello, because it's a lie that migrants hurt America. It's a lie that migrants take things from Americans. Hello, darling. You really want that popcorn, don't you? You have waited patiently for quite a bit. All right, so should we say goodbye to these folks? I like to say a little bit of a wind down goodbye. You know, it takes me a minute. I'll say goodbye to everybody. Look, Bernadette's sponsoring me. And see, that's $5 a month for mommy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's James. That's a similar name to somebody you yeah. know, isn't it? Yes. Uh, that's the name of a politician in in America, um, Maya. I thought it was Jamie. Yeah, you no, know, that's not how your brother spells his name. I thought it was J A. Yeah, but there's an I in it. See? Yeah. The, hold on. There's no I in it. Oh, Marsha asks, and I missed this before. Where is Giuliani anyway? Does there's um, no I in Jamie's name? It's after the end, oh. uh, but we don't talk about names on the broadcast member because we yeah. try and keep a little bit of privacy. Yeah. I still don't know who it is. Oh, I'll show you. This is this is this is Jamie Harrison here. Hey, folks! It's yeah, Jamie Harrison, the chair of the DNC. Jamie Harrison. Okay. And Cory Booker's trending as well. Did I he do something? Mm -hmm. right. Jamie, another person called Jamie. That funny baby. Cory Booker and RuPaul are cousins? <gasps> no way. Wow. Everybody's mind is being blown. Uh, oh, and somebody said, hey, they were also promised by Republicans that Cory Booker would invade your suburb. Yes, that there would be taco trucks on every corner. And, and they're noting that as the economy spikes, Republicans are still waiting for the Biden depression that Trump predicted. And the rebounding economy is headed for its best year since 1984. Mummy's mommy's wrapping it up, darling. And that's really important because Republicans who in power, who still probably are vaccinated themselves, but still kind of promote adherence to the Trump fantasy of, of researchers and doctors are overhyping COVID and it's not real. People who still pay into that, like Tucker Carlson, who's not an elected Republican politician, but who definitely exerts as much influence as a Republican politician, because he, I mean, more so when Trump was in office, but even now he shapes the national dialogue so much. Uh, and he definitely, as, as the leading ratings person for nightly talk shows he's definitely influencing a large number of americans and and brainwashing them to be little authoritarian anti-migrant 
fascists who feel that that migrants are are to be feared and despised and are worthy of contempt rather than the true, the more authentically true American value, which is to recognize that American prosperity is a bi-directional project between people who've lived there for a while and people who bring fresh energy and fresh invention and fresh work ethic to the US and, and make it soar in an economic sense. Did you write over the top? Yes, you did. You're so mad just because I made you wait a bit for popcorn. Wow. Mum, mummy's doing what's called wrapping up, which is building to a crescendo of a conclusion. I'm saying keep an eye out for Republicans no, purposely trying to you. sabotage. No, but that's you. No, that's you. You drew me. No, did you draw a very mommy. big fat head for me? Wow. That's you. That's and you're holding a garbage bag. I'm holding a garbage bag. And that's what you eat. <gasps> I eat garbage. Wow, you sassy pants. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting some real character judgment here from my child. Okay. And so in conclusion, there are some ways that have been found to help Republicans get the vaccination that motivates them. And that is recommendations from their doctors. So if they feel that it's not coming from the government. So if you Google the words Frank Lutz, is it Lutz or Luntz? Frank Luntz, Republican vaccination. Uh, that will lead you to a Washington Post article that might give you some ideas if you know any vaccine hesitant folks. That's one of the biggest services we can do for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris at this point is to help support the mass vaccination efforts because now it's getting to the point where all Americans are eligible, all American adults are eligible for a vaccine. And we want to help that, don't we? One day you might be eligible for a vaccine, baby yeah. girl. And then you won't have to worry about getting COVID so much. Although you can still get it, just yeah. probably relatively asymptomatic. We don't know how contagious that low symptomatic iteration of the virus might be, but it, vaccinations do seem to really contain the virus because mm -hmm. Israel's down to zero deaths today. They've still got approximately 100 cases a day. Well, look, they say you the bomb. That's something I'm sharing called. Nope. Popcorn time. Oh, enjoy your family popcorn time in your day. Yes. Popcorn time. Popcorn time. But that means it's now popcorn. And Sheldon gave us an award too. Look at that heart, darling. Uh -huh. And Alan says, good afternoon and thank you. Shall we say thank you to Alan? Say thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Sheldon. And John says racism sells, which it does to some people, but there's lots of decent people that it doesn't sell to. And by forming a community and more and more people being noisy about it on TikTok, on all platforms of social media and in their communities, we strengthen the pro-democracy side of civilization in its current form and we make everybody stronger and more powerful. Bye-bye, everybody. Popcorn. What are we going to say as a goodbye message? So, Popcorn. Till we meet again, I know you're hilarious, say... Should we hope that they have a nice day? Ew, I know. Popcorn time. Yeah? Popcorn. Are they going to eat the popcorn too? It's bedtime for them, so what might they eat at night time mm. for bed? I think family movie night, popcorn. I think it might even be time over for family movie night for them. It's mm -hmm. bedtime sleepies on the other side of the world. Because remember, the sun touches different parts of the world at different times. Well, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. You can. Because. Oh, yeah, because it'll be the weekend tomorrow. For us, yeah. it's Saturday morning. For you, it's Friday night. Because we're ahead of them. The sun woke our part of the world up first. And next, it will come to... Oh, baby girl, uh, that's going to I didn't make it. I didn't. Oh. It might just make some bad news. Um, all right. So I think everybody's saying goodbye now. Oh, but with family movie night is uh, at dinner time. You turn on the TV, watch a movie with all your fa with your fam 
family members, but not all your family. It could just be maybe your mom, dad, maybe a sister or brother. Yeah, that's that's family movie night for you. Yeah. Uh, oh, and you could eat popcorn and snacks. Yes. And watch a movie that all your family agrees on. Yes. Oh, yeah. Agreement is very important, isn't it? All right. And so at, at, at dinner time. At dinner time, yes. Alan says milk and cookies. He might have that for a snack. That'll keep you awake, John. Not John, Alan. You <laughs> have Santa Claus. Uh, John says so long, farewell. Bernadette says bye bye. Say bye bye. Sheldon enjoyed the broadcast. And anything else? No, that's all. Okay. Bye, everyone. Till we till we see each other again. Au revoir. Au revoir. Oh, good girl. Au revoir. I know how to say goodbye in front of Oh, Chris said, hang on. Christopher said goodbye too. Bye, Christopher. Bye, Marsha. Bye, Molly, Alan, Sheldon, John, Bernadette. Have we said goodbye to everybody? I think so. Sheldon Mommy, said you, Christopher. Yeah. You said no more Chinese. You're... For well, some reason, I know more Chinese, and you, and you know less. And I am older. You know well, older than me, but you know more Chinese than me. <laughs> and I'm younger, so that means kids are little parents. Yes, <laughs> just like in Rain Child, the kids beat the parents. That's true. They did beat the parents. And that is in real life, member. Yeah, it, it's it's educational, so that means kids are little parents. Did you say Rain Child? Can you say brainchild? Brainchild. Very good. Oh, and which means kids will parents. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, wait, no. Yeah. I he say said yes. yes. You say no. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right.